This video is not for you. You're already interested in math. For you, solving systems of linear equations is second nature. You don't need an explainer video to understand it. But if you're a teacher for students that hate math, or you're a parent with a child studying for college entrance exams, you may have experienced frustration trying to help someone understand system of linear equations. How can this person not understand? The subject is so intuitively obvious, it doesn't even need an explainer video. We forget that for some people, math does not come easily. This video is not for people that love math. This is a video for people that hate math. Let's take an example. A barnyard has cows and ducks. There's 20 animals and 52 legs. How many each of cows and ducks? These type of questions are common in a textbook or an entrance exam because they demonstrate mastery of several algebraic concepts. The commutative property, the substitution property, the principle of equality, use of variables as an abstraction. Even negative numbers may be difficult for some people. I mean, what exactly is a negative duck? Is it inside out? Is it made of antimatter? Negaduck? Try to empathize with someone who hates math. These are not easy ideas. So instead, let's try a different way. A method that uses no algebra. All we will use is basic counting and one unique idea. Our barnyard has cows and ducks and we don't know how many of each. Cows have four legs, ducks have two legs. The trick is to have the cow stand on their back legs. Don't think that the cow has four legs. Think that the cow has two legs on the ground and two legs in the air. We have unadded the legs. It isn't two plus two equals four. It's four equals two plus two. Now all we do is count. How many legs on the ground? Cows and ducks, either one, have two legs on the ground. Because there's 20 animals, there must be 40 legs on the ground. How many legs in the air? There are 52 legs total, of those, 40 are on the ground, so there must be 12 legs in the air. Where do those legs come from? They can't come from the ducks because ducks don't have any legs in the air. Those legs can only come from the cows. And since each cow has two legs in the air, there must be six cows. There's 20 animals total, six of which are cows, so there must be 14 ducks. No algebra needed. We just use the unadd function and then basic arithmetic. Let's do another. A theater sells adult tickets for eight bucks and kids tickets for five bucks. 250 people see the movie and total sales were 1,643 bucks. How many each of adult tickets and kids tickets? Again, the trick is to unadd. Eight is five plus three. Now all we do is count. Everyone goes through the ticket booth, adults and children, either one paying five bucks as they walk past. 250 people each just paid five bucks. So the theater earned 1,250 bucks. But we know the total sales were 1,643. They came up short. How much did they come up short? 1,643 minus 1,250 means there's still 393 bucks left to get. How will the theater get this money? 
they ask each adult to come back out of the theater and go through the line again. The second time, the adults each pay three bucks as they walk past. How many adults have to pay three bucks in order for the theater to get the missing 393 bucks? 131 adults. Out of 250 people total, all the rest must be children. So that's 119 children. The first example, we had cows and ducks. We know the combined total and are asked to find each of the inputs. Likewise, in the second problem, we have the combined total and are asked to find each of the inputs. The same unadd function can still be used with the question of different setups. What if we know one of the inputs and are asked to find the total and the other input? A swimming pool is half full. Another 75 cubic meters is pumped in. The pool is then two-thirds full. What is the capacity of the pool? Again, we start by unadding. Two-thirds is equal to one-half plus one-sixth. That one-sixth is the amount that got pumped in, and we know that that's 75 cubic meters. One-sixth done six times is the total volume of the pool. So we just add up 75 six times. That's a total of 450 cubic meters. I've been calling this the unadd function, but there's other math functions that are similar, but I don't feel they're exactly the same. One is partitioning. As an example, if you flipped a coin four times in a row, there's 16 possible outcomes. We can group those outcomes into cases where there's at least one head, but never two or more heads in a row. Also, another group where there is either never a head or there is at least two heads back to back. The result is a group of seven and a group of nine. But this is not exactly the same thing as unadding. We're operating on an abstract group and not purely on numbers. This operation turns up a lot in set theory, but it's not a useful tool for algebra. There's also factoring. We can start with the number 12 and unmultiply it into its component pieces. But that's multiplication and not addition. There's historical reasons why I think that unmultiplying gets its own special name, where unadding doesn't have a name of its own. But that's a topic for another video. There's also decomposition. Positional notation is taught this way to show that 37 is equal to 30 plus 7. The question I have here is that it's never used for problem solving. It's just a way to demonstrate positional notation. So I use the term unadd because I don't feel there's any term that accurately describes what we're doing. Let's finish this with one more. An office worker must fill out 50 TPS reports. For each report finished by the end of the day, the worker gets 10 bucks. But any unfinished reports, the worker has to pay a fine of one buck. At the end of the day, the worker has earned 412 bucks. How many TPS reports did the worker finish? Here, it's a bit harder to understand how we were unadding a negative one, but it still works when we think of it as taking two numbers that add together to make negative one. There's obviously many number pairs that do this, but the one we want is 10 and negative 11. Now we see that the worker gets 10 bucks per TPS report, regardless if the report is finished or not. 
the second the TPS report lands on his desk, he's going to get 10 bucks per report. There are 50 reports, so the worker instantly gets 500 bucks. But wait, he got paid too much. He should only get 412 bucks. He was overpaid by 88 bucks and will need to pay that back. The way he pays it back is by not finishing a report. For each report unfinished, he has to give back 11 bucks. So to pay back 88 bucks, there must be eight unfinished reports. Since there's 50 reports total, then 42 reports got finished. Now, it's totally possible to do this with system of linear equations. That's fine. And for someone like you that loves math, this is likely the preferred method. But this video is not for you. Try to empathize for a moment with someone who hates math. By using the unadd method, there's fewer abstract ideas to think about. There's fewer steps and therefore fewer places to make mistakes. And arguably, the method is faster and that's important for college application tests that use a time limit. As a final word, I have to point out that I didn't come up with the unadd method myself. I originally read it in the book Alice in Puzzle Land by Raymond Smullyan. In the story, Alice and the Griffin were discussing one of the puzzles. Alice mentions that she could probably solve the puzzle using algebra, and the Griffin explains that he invented his own method that doesn't use algebra. This seems to me to be an author surrogate, and it's actually Raymond Smullyan himself that came up with the unadd function, but there's no way that I can prove this. If you've ever seen the unadd method used in another context, or know its actual name, please let me know in the comments.